In today's tutorial, we're going to do a family pair of socks. This is for children two to four, child six to eight, ladies five to six, ladies seven to eight, and men's sizes. Let's do that next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on some socks and this is the family socks. This is the smallest size version of two to four years of age. There's many different sizes available for the entire family. Today I'm gonna be breaking down the steps and being able to make socks. In the tutorial format I'm gonna show you the child size version because everywhere we have to move stitch markers around and etc. is all done at the same points and the same kind of information for all of them. So I only have to really film out one tutorial because once you see it it's great. So whether you choose a really kind of a fun yarn like this one here. This is the Sunset Strips and uh, this is the Croy Sock Yarn or whether you go Croy's uh, Sock Yarn FX. This here has a slower transition just like you see and it really does do a great job when you look at it from this perspective. So let's get started and let's start looking at this tutorial in more detail. Throughout today's lesson we're gonna end up back on the chalkboard and the chalkboard has all the different steps that are involved with making the pair of socks that you see on screen. So obviously you're looking at the adult size version. The size that we are doing is the child size which is what I had in my hand earlier. So we're gonna go through the introduction and then we're gonna go through each one of the steps. There are six different steps from the toe, toe growth, you have the instep, you have the ankle to the cuff, you have the cuff and then you come back and do the heel. So in between each one we're gonna come right back to the screen and then restart. So let's begin for the introduction of the pattern review, size substitutions and stitch markers and more tips. So here is our pattern and it's available on yarnspirations.com. There's a link in the more information of this video if you'd like to access it. And you will see that there's different sizes available from two to four, six to eight, ladies sizes and then men's. And so you can see that they're represented by a color and those colors are represented in the pattern when you see a multiple of instructions like so. So for example it says chain six and then six, nine, nine and ten. So you're thinking okay which one am I doing? So you look at the diagram, you look at here and you say okay I'm doing the child size version two to four look for the color it's six. So what I like to do is that once I commit to a size I like to go through my pattern with a highlighter and highlight every time that you see that there's instruction with multiples like so to indicating all the different sizes I like to highlight the one I'm gonna do. This is really critical I think even when you're doing like a um, uh, um, maybe a lady size halfway through the middle if you highlight that and you go through your pattern first you will not probably screw up like you could if you don't. So it's just one of those things that I think that you should really can do. Um, again this is a personal choice and that's up to you. So what we're going to be doing in today's tutorial is that I'm going to be doing the child size version the two to four and I'm going to be saying chain six. So the steps involved in between each one of all of these are the same as far as moving stitch markers around and being able to take your information. So for example I get to round two and it says one single crochet in the next four. I've highlighted because that's the one I'm going to do but if you're doing other sizes then you'll just follow the which one it is that you're working on. So when it comes down and you want to do for example up here it says that we have to complete the sock until it's three and a half inches in length but the other sizes are four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half and what you're looking at here is all the different sizes. So anytime there's a decision to be made on which ones that you're working on just look for the one that you're working on in the brackets and that makes it a lot easier. So you can substitute the information but substituting um, the stitch marker locations and everything that's all pretty much the same. You just have to look to this diagram or this pattern in, in order to follow. So what when you look at it then from this perspective when you eliminate all of this extra steps out like this this pattern is really not that big uh, because it's having five different uh, patterns on one if you eliminate and just the size that you were doing in the next four is that this pattern would be a lot smaller. So let's uh, review then and let's do first size substitutions we've just done. Let's uh, look at the yarn as our next option. So for your socks you have four different options when it comes to yarnspirations.com. Remember they are the makers of Peyton's and Bernat yarn. So what we have here is that the Peyton's here Croy socks here is just the regular brand of Croy. So you can actually find solid colors if you wish or you can find really interesting mixed combos. This particular sock today I'm going to use this because it's pretty funky stuff and let's turn it over because I know you're going to email me and ask me what that is. That's all that's called Sunset Stripes 
And so um, this is a really kind of a funky kind of yarn. Now Peyton's also has a Croy FX where the colors transition really slowly and so you'll see that available on their website and so the different colors that they have is really kind of uh, the tones kind of really work into each other and really quite nice. So these Peyton's ones are all considered 75% wool and 90 or sorry 25% nylon and because of that the, these have wool in them. So if people that have wool allergies this may not be an option for you but Yarn Inspirations also has Bernat socks which is a, is acrylic. So this has um, acrylic and what is the blend here? I have kind of forgotten. So it's 60% acrylic and 40% nylon. So it's the nylon in these particular items that make uh, crochet socks worth it. So because it's made of nylon it can stand the wear and tear. If you've ever used an afghan for a short time frame you'll notice that it gets all scuffy and pilly. Because this has got nylon in it these socks will last you years. And so you'll see that there's different colors in each one of these lines. So there's, this is one line here, another line here and then the Bernat socks. So whether you are allergic to wool then you can do the Bernat socks if you're looking for warmth and you can handle the wool and this is another option. So you, there's lots and lots of different color choices and that's completely up to you. So let's review the stitch markers. So you're going to notice that I left in the stitch markers that I used when I made my little prototype here and the stitch markers really help you to be able to keep balance and keep your counts and I just left them in there as I had to make decisions as I was one as I went along. So you can see that here and uh, this is actually pretty cool. So what I like to do for stitch markers you know there's fancy doodads on the market but I like just honestly just using some spare yarn and we're going to use those as our stitch uh, markers. These stitch markers I wouldn't even do the pattern if you're not even going to consider to do stitch markers. Once you get to a certain point it says crochet to the stitch marker and then do this and then crochet to the next stitch marker and do that. So if it does if you don't do stitch markers then you don't know where you're going to go. So it's really important to have stitch markers and to keep count throughout your pattern. If you're not going to count or you don't have the desire to count then a sock is not meant for you because you got to do two of them. So it's not like it's a one-off item like a hat. So you need to keep your counts to make them uh, uh, accountable. You are also going to need today is a tape measure in order to measure as you go along. It's really important that you have a, one of these in order to keep it in balance. So let's get ready today. I've got my Peyton's Croy socks. You need two balls for the child size all the way to the ladies and then the men's size you need three balls of this. You can substitute the Bernat socks if you wish in order to do this particular pattern. There's more yardage on this but because this is made of acrylic and not wool acrylic is cheaper to manufacture so you'll notice that the price for this is almost in half of this but that's because it's wool versus acrylic. So you're also going to need a 3.25 millimeter size D crochet hook today. As full disclaimer you may see it. I'm actually using a three and a half which has changed the actual um, sock dimensions but because I've already done it with that I want to do the second one of that so I can maintain it. So if you're going to change anything make sure that you keep it equal. So let's begin at the toe section and at the toe section we're going to start off right away. We're going to create a flat toe so if you actually look at it from this point of view it's going to create flat just like this and then we're going to start expanding so it looks like a triangle at this point. So once we get started then we're going to be moving our stitch markers up in order to do the growth of the toe. So we're going to get started right on the toe first and then move our way up. So leaving a little bit of a longer string than normal I want you, we're going to use a darning needle to hide that in at the end. I want you to create a slip knot and insert your hook in. So remember I am doing the toddler size so just substitute the information on pattern uh, in order to keep it but all the stitch marker information and everything that we're going to be following today is accurate for all sizes. So I'm going to be chaining six. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So we're going to just hold here for a second and then we're going to start doing a complete revolution around the top of the chain and the bottom next. So starting second chain from the hook so just count it back so one and two and going into the back loop only of the, of the chain. Okay it does a nicer look and I want you to single crochet that one and then it says to single crochet the next three. Okay for this particular size. So one, two, and three. And I'm going a little bit slower than normal today. 
think I'm just waking up. So we have this last stitch that's available to you, the last chain and in the last one I want you to put three single crochets in there. So that's gonna cause it to wrap around. So we're gonna have to one, two and three. Now notice how I kinda just kinda just switched around the chain. So now I want to go along the back side of that same chain and back through. So what you want to do then is that you wanna do one single crochet in each of the next three. So just working your way back along the bottom of the chain cause it's turned over. Put down the straggler so it's down on top and trap that into position and you got one two and three. So what's gonna happen to keep this in balance, let me do the third one. The camera angle that you're seeing it at and where I'm sitting behind the camera is not really convenient for me so I'm a little bit struggling. So the very first one that we started off with here, we want to put in two single crochets into that first one to complete the revolution going all the way around. See how we have three on this side where my thumb is moving? So there should be three on this side. You've already done only one as you moved along and you wanna put two into the final one and that completes that kind of turnaround and then you've got a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet. So before you move on to this process I need you to do a check and you are going to notice that you're, there's gonna be a total of 12 stitches going all the way around. You have gotta make sure that there's 12 uh, before you move on from this process. Again the other sizes are there uh, for the stitch count. So you need to count back. So just looking back underneath. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. If you do not have 12 and you're supposed to then you need to stop here because something is wrong. So what you're gonna be noticing is that as we move along in this pattern, I'm gonna let the straggler follow because I have buried it, is that you're going to notice that this slip stitching line that's here is going to be along the bottom of the sock going all the way up. Just, do you see it? It's just slight. And so what we're going to be doing is that every time we do a slip stitch we're along the bottom. So what I assumed when I did this pattern is that I thought that the slip stitching would carry up through the side and up but it carries right through the bottom and so because it's on the bottom it's out of sight out of mind for whoever's wearing it. Let's move along to the second round and then we're gonna start playing with stitch markers next. So let's move along. We're going to start up by chaining one and in the same one as the join you wanna put a single crochet in. And for the toddler size then we have to do single crochet into the next four. So you gotta physically count that out. So let's go to the next one for one, two, three and four. And in the next one what you want to do is put in three single crochets into the next one. So let's do that three. So one, two and three. Now hold here. The middle one that you just put into there you want to just come back, pull this out, and grab a stitch marker and you wanna mark it. Okay so just it's not the one that's right underneath it's the second one back. Okay that's the middle one of the three. Mark it with a stitch marker just pull it through and you need these stitch markers in order to continue. So do not, if you don't wanna commit to stitch markers then turn off the tutorial now because this is the only way to keep this in balance and to be growing properly. So now you're gonna continue along and you're going to do the next five of single crochets. So one, two, three and then do the next one. This is four and five. So the next one is going to have three single crochets into it. Okay so let's go to the next one and there's gonna be three in this one. So one, two and three just like that. On the second one of those three put the another stitch marker in on that side. Okay so now you have the other side and so these stitch markers should be opposite to each other. I think moving stitch markers are, are I think are what kind of stalls the whole process but it's these stitch markers that save you at the end of the day. So now you've got your hook back in and so you will see that the stitch markers are opposite to each other. Do you see that? So we're gonna continue along 
and then um, once you get your stitch marker in then you just slip stitch it to the beginning one that you had started with. And I want you to do a physical count now just to make sure you're good. Okay, so in this particular round you should have a total of 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So I have 16 in a round. If you do not have that then stop. You need to uh, just uh, double check where you are. And because once you get this started these counts make a big difference. So let's continue along for round number three. So in round number three we're going to then chain up one and we're gonna single crochet into the same one as the join and you're gonna continue to single crochet in each stitch until you hit the stitch marker. So this is where these stitch markers come into play. I'm not physically counting. I have double checked before I moved on that the last round was correct and right where that stitch marker is I wanna place in three more single crochets and I wanna move that stitch marker then up to the middle one of the new three in order to keep that in balance. So here I am in the stitch marker and I wanna just move the stitch marker out of the way. Don't take it out of your project. Leave it in. So one and then two and three and what I want you to do is come back to the second one of those three. Just going right in. Grab a piece of that stitch marker and just pull it through. Don't pull it all the way through. And just leave it so you can see the line just like there and then put your hook back in and I want you to continue then around so just one single crochet into each. So I'm not even counting because I don't need to and it doesn't tell you to. It just tells you to look for stitch markers. And at the next stitch marker that's coming up, one after this one, you wanna put in another three. So just move that stitch marker out of the way so you can do it. So three single crochets into that one and move that stitch marker then up to the middle one of the new three. One, two, and three and then go back to the second one of that one and pull through a piece of that stitch marker through because you use that next time and continue and you have two stitches left. I can see that there's two stitches left as an experienced crochet. So I'm gonna finish those two off with a single crochet and then join it. So right here it looks like you have two stitches left to this point but you don't. This is the carryover. This is leaning over. So make sure that you don't count that as a stitch and just literally go to the first single crochet and joining with the slip stitch like so. Okay so this is going to be the conclusion of doing the toe and now we're gonna do toe growth from this point forward. So let's move along to that part of the chapter. So now we're gonna move along in my chalkboard to the toe growth. We're going to expand the front of the toe to be larger and before we get to the instep where the instep is just a solid round and around. So let's carry on and do the toe growth next for chapter number two. So let's carry on in the toe growth. This is round after round number three of doing the toe and what we're going to do is five more revolutions now of the exact same thing of what we've already learned. So we're gonna do one single crochet into each but except for these uh, ends we are going to put three single crochets in and mark the middle one and then carry on and then mark, uh, come to this one do three, mark the middle one and then stop. And we wanna do five revolutions of this. You're going to notice that this is going to expand this circle uh, several times in order to do so. So what, let's get you started. I'm gonna do round number one of five with you. Remember the other sizes is, is repeating of six, seven, eight and eight um, in order to um, carry on for those sizes. So make sure you're just looking at your instructions for those. So for the toddler size it's only five so this is one. So I'm just doing one single crochet into each And on a sheet of paper or even on the pattern itself which I did right on there rows one, two, three, four, and 5 and check it off as you go. So I'm here at the stitch marker once again and I'm just going to move the stitch marker out of the way. Put my three single crochets there. So one, two, and three. Come back to the second one. Okay move that stitch marker into that second position. Okay so actually the stitch marker is on the other side. I gotta pull it through. 
So I, I weave these stitch markers in. As much as I have over the years have bought those doodad things for stitch markers, I just find spare yarn is easier to find um, and is, it's easier to work with as well. So the middle one is marked. So I'm just gonna carry on around with just one single crochet into each. You're going to notice it's gonna build beautifully as the front of your toe takes shape. And you're gonna wanna honestly fold it out so that the middle is facing towards you when you go to crochet as well. So coming around to the other side, you wanna just move that stitch marker out of the way, put in your three single crochets there. So one, two, and three. Okay, move that stitch marker up to the second one of those three. These stitch markers are the answer to this particular pattern. Okay, and then carry on until you get back to where you started. So this stitch, um, slip stitching, will be in the center area of the sock. It's not 100% in the center, so don't expect it to be. But every now and then you want to double check. So every revolution that you do around at this point is gonna grow uh, by three, sorry, by four stitches. Okay, so what we had in the last round is that there was a total of 16 stitches, so now there should be 20. And then next time you do it, then there should be 24, and then 28, 32, and 36, and etc. So what you wanna do is that you wanna make sure by the time you get to your round number five, that those increments actually work out to each other. And I would physically count it before moving on to get it. So for myself, is that for the child size version, we, we're gonna have a total of 40 of these going all the way around once we complete all five of our rows. So please complete the rest of the rows growing incrementally just like you, I showed you and then when we come back then we're gonna start moving on to the end step but we'll come back and review this before we move on to that process. So here I am at the toe and for the size that I'm working on the two to four there should be 40 stitches going all the way around. I'm gonna show you a cheating technique in just a moment but I wanna tell you how many stitches there are first. The next child size six to eight you should have 44 stitches all the way around. The next size lady size five to six is going to be 48 stitches all the way around and lady size seven to eight and men's will only have 52 going all the way around. So for example you count and let's just Let's just do something. So you count and you realize, oh my goodness, I'm short one stitch. So instead of 40, I ended up with 39. No big deal. You're in the bottom of the sock anyway. So what you can do, just one stitch before the final, just put in two into the same one here and then into the next one and then join it and then you're back to your 40, your 40 like you should be. You can do that for all the different sizes. Again, it's gonna be very unnoticeable. It's on the bottom and it will keep you in balance. The big trick with these socks is that you wanna make sure the instep is all the same size. So you don't wanna be messing around with that because it will look different in the, in the span of the sock. So what happens if you are, have an extra? So for example, you end up with 41 around instead of 40, instead of 40. Well then you can subtract. So just going into the next stitch, pull through, going into the next stitch, pull through, and then pull through both. And then those two just became one and then you can join and therefore 41 just became 40 by putting two together and you can do that right on the bottom as well. For myself, I was accurate at that time so this has uh, been pretty good. So this is a great way to cheat the technique. I would not frog all the way back out if it were me because A, I'm lazy and B, you don't need to. You can pretty well hide that and there's areas in crochet that you can cheat and then you get yourself back. So now you can abandon these stitch markers. I leave them in just for fun um, but you're now done with these stitch markers and I would actually, you know what, leave those in. You want to leave those in just to help you in the further step. It doesn't say to remove it and I did actually kind of use it when I think about it out loud. <laughs> okay, so let's move along to the next chapter and it's the in step next. So welcome back to the chalkboard and we're back on to moving on to the step for in step for number three. So we're going to move then from the growth of the toe all the way to where the heel kind of meets up to it and then we're going to then work our way up from ankle to cuff at that point. So the heel in this particular pattern is uh, done at the very end but the in step all it is is one single crochet going round and around and around and around uh, until you get to the length that you need. So let's move along to doing the in step next. So we're moving on to the instep and we wanna mark where we are right now with the stitch marker. We wanna take a measurement from here. I actually didn't do that the very first time around and then I had to measure and I was off. So what I want you to do, just right where you are right now, just go in and out 
of a few stitches. So in and just jump over two and back out the other side and I want you to create a line in your work with another stitch marker and pull it through and through and then just move down a little bit further and pull it through and this is going to be a measurement line that we need to go from this point. So the next part of this tutorial is we just go round and round. We have to measure a certain distance and the distance is from this particular spot in the in the crochet project and not from the tip of the toe like I thought originally. So I'm just gonna leave that in just as myself and you can see I did that the original and then we need to go and grow a distance. So what we have here for the, my size it's three and a half inches and then for the next kid's size it's, it's four and a half. For the ladies uh, first size it's five and a half. Then for the um, next size ladies it's six and a half and then for men's it's seven and a half. So you're gonna just uh, continue to go and that's gonna take you up until this point where we're going to then start uh, doing the division to then go up to here and then we're gonna come back to the cuff after that. So let's get you started on this and then you're just gonna need a tape measure to, in order to measure and all you're just gonna do, you don't need to move up any stitch markers anymore. You can just abandon those. You're just gonna go around in complete circles and you're gonna notice that the, the bottom of the sock is gonna form. So there's no growth or subtraction. So just chain up one and it's just one single crochet into each and then just join it with a single crochet. So remember what we had in the last part of this chapter is that there was 40 stitches going all the way around for my size. You may have had the other sizes and I've already indicated those uh, earlier on this tutorial but you should end up with that same stitch count all the way back throughout your instep. Okay so you will never grow and you'll never subtract. So I had 40 right at this point so when I'm done my instep and I do my three and a half inches that is required from the stitch marker. So the dimensions are from the stitch marker going back. The, once I have that done there should still be 40 there waiting for me on the other side. So if I've got 44 or if I got less I know I've dropped a stitch along the way and uh, you just have to make sure that you're just watching your stitch counts. Occasionally what I like to do is every few rounds I like to just verify and count all 40. Make sure that they're there and if they're not then I know to stop and correct because this is gonna be very noticeable if it's a different size on your project. So just uh, one single crochet in each going all the way around. Please complete it in this particular area then for three and a half inches, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, and seven and a half depending on what size you're working off from and remember that it is from this stitch marker right here going for that dimension and not from the tip of the toe. So I'll leave that with you and we'll come back and we'll get the review the end step of what you did and then we're gonna move on then to the next part of this tutorial. So I'm back with the instep and I've now done my three and a half inches from this stitch marker to here. Now if you're doing the other sizes it's, it's four and a half, five and a half, six and a half and seven and a half and then we're gonna carry on. So now what we need to do is that we need to uh, make sure that you ended up with your proper count. So there's still 40 around mine and you may have 44. Uh, what were my dimensions? 44, 48 and 52. Make sure you still have this right dimensions that you still had when you were back over here. If not just improvise a little bit in order to get it to go. So we're going to fasten off this yarn and what I want you to do is that I want you just to fasten off and pull through the string right here and I just want you to just firmly but not crazily just go in and out of the stitches weaving this in for about maybe a, about almost two inches across. So just in and out of the stitches and in the next revolution what we're going to do is we're gonna capture that underneath the stitches so that you can um, so that we can uh, do this together. So we're just gonna go in and out back and forth. If you prefer to use a darning needle you can but this will also work too and because crochet is about knots really um, it will tighten up onto itself so it should never follow anyway. Okay so I want to take you to the pattern. I wanna point out something to you before we move along to the next part of the process because I think it's really important. So in the next part of the tutorial we're going to do the heel opening in the sock and what I want you to pay attention to that we're gonna come back when we do the heel is right here. So the numbers 38, 42, 52, 56 and 58 all mean something. 
And what this is, is that this is the number of stitches that are left in the heel in the opening as we go to close it. And I think it's really important to recognize this right now. So right now when I was up here, I actually have 40, but you will notice here when we go to do this next process that we're going to be skipping over two. And that's gonna happen for all the different sizes so that it ends up being a different size here. So 40 went down to 38, 44 went to 42, 54 went down to 52, and so forth and so forth. And so because of that we end up, uh, it's just easier to identify how many stitches are in the heel if you're looking to this number and really kind of thinking about it as you go. So let's move along in the next part of this tutorial we're gonna go from the ankle to the cuff next. So welcome back to the chalkboard. We're now on chapter number four of the ankle to the cuff. We are going to create a space then for where the heel should go and we're gonna go from where we are right now all the way to the top of the cuff. The cuff is underside of the jeans that you cannot see and the cuff is really quite easy in itself. So let's move along to the next part for the ankle to the cuff in chapter number four. So let's then create the opening for the heel as we move from the ankle to the cuff. So the underside is going to be where the heel is going to be. So just visualize that. So if you look at the original, here is the seam line here, here is the cuff. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to start with the front side and work our way up. And what we want to do is to turn this over, so this is the seam line, turn it over and fold it roughly in half. So I'm going to ask you to put some trust into the system right now and get, grab two more stitch markers. And right where it's folded in half, so just look down at the bottom here. Okay, so just look, see these stitch markers here? They were right in the corner pockets of basically, it's like a game pool, but fold it so that these are kind of right in the edges like this and then just slide your fingers up and you get the halfway spot. Okay, so what I want you to do grabbing a spare piece of thread and going right into an edge. You notice I have not counted anything. Okay, so I'm just gonna go right into an edge and pull through a stitch marker like so. Leave it there and then come into the other side and just roughly go into the other side and do the same thing. You're not thinking that I'm not gonna count, right? Hopefully you're not thinking that crazy kind of idea. But what I want you to do now is now we're gonna count. And you're gonna do this for all sizes but watch what I'm gonna do in order to make it easier for myself. So I'm bringing back the pattern. I folded it in half but how am I gonna double check if I've got it right? So it says one single crochet into the same space as the chain one where we're gonna join on and then 19 single crochets after that. That gives you a total of 20. So this 21 would give you a total of 22. This one would be 27, 29, 30. Okay, so you're looking at this. So what I want you to do is that I want you to pull back your project and I want you to count which includes the stitch markers. So in my case it'll be 20. Okay, so look at that size that you're doing. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So I'm off by one strand. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna move that one stitch marker over. So I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna recount one more time. Okay, so that's how you're gonna double check. Okay, so let's do that again. So just double count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So there you are, okay? So you will have whatever sizes you're working on, that will be how you're figuring it out. So I'm looking at the top side of the sock and what we're gonna do is start right here and then we're gonna start and when we, we're gonna go across this row here and then right when we get to the stitch marker, we're gonna go into that final one and we're gonna do a chain and create an opening space that is on the back that we will fill in later. So we're gonna be coming across and we're gonna do a chain which then takes us here and this area is gonna be completely missing. So let's move along to the first round of doing this and let's grab our yarn back up and let's join it back in. So let's rejoin our yarn. Do not create a slip knot, just create a loop. Okay, just like this. Okay, so no loops, no ties, no nothing. You don't need it. So I want you to come in right where the first stitch marker is. Slide in. And I want you to pull that loop through. Okay, let the straggler, the, the loose end, just fall down on top of the project. And you're gonna trap that into position going across. So then you're just gonna chain one and into the same one you're going to single crochet. So 
this is one and then it said to do one single crochet in the next 19. So there's a total of 20. So let's count those out anyway. So leaving this straggler down on top, capture it right underneath. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen is the final one of where the stitch marker is. So you notice I just dragged that other starting strand right underneath and so what I'm gonna do now is that I've dragged it right underneath. You can't even see it. I'm just gonna safely trim that piece out and you'll never see that starting strand. So now that you've gotten here we need to create a chain to jump over to create the space for the heel. So for the child size version that I'm working on right now it's gonna be chaining of 18. The other sizes are chaining of 20, 25, 27 or 28. It says to chain loosely so just be calm with your uh, chaining. So they're gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. So I'm just going to then join it to the beginning. So just come right over. Just keep rotating to where you started and right in the first single crochet I want you to slip stitch in. So just take your time getting it in. In my case I don't think it's a choice. <laughs> so we're gonna just join that there. Okay. It's gonna be a little bit tight because we've joined on our yarn. So now what you've done is you've gone all the way around. It just happens to be changing color as I did it. But now you've got a space for the heel that is appearing in behind. So what we have to do is that did you notice something? We we did a total of 20 or sorry of 10 of 20 so did you notice we did a total of 20 single crochets. So we did a single crochet in the first one, 19 in the next and then there's a total of 18 chains. So you notice that we've just gone from 40 revolutions now to 38 by changing the ch chain and that just makes it a little bit tighter than for the, the tube area of going up to the cuff. So let's begin the next part of the process and this is just really quite easy. Uh, there's no increasing or decreasing required. We're just going to chain one and we're gonna do one single crochet into each of the single crochets all the way around until we get to the chain again. So there. So you can see I'm not really counting. I don't need to. So what we're going to do on the chain is that you really gotta take your time with that chain. You really gotta do that. Um, it's one of those items where if you are sloppy with your chain your um, stitches when you go to join the heel back in will not look good. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just being honest. Okay so one single crochet into each going all the way to the final one before the chain starts. The stitch marker will give you that clue as well. I would leave in that stitch marker where we left it before then it will give you clues then when we go to do the heel. So don't remove that out yet. Okay so here's the one just before the chain. So in the chain what I want you to do is grab only one strand of string only. Okay one strand and I want you to single crochet. Count those out to be 19. So one and two. Sorry it's to be 18. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm taking my time. Nine. Ten, eleven, 
11, 12. Okay, so I grabbed two strands there by accident, just only grabbed one. It was 12. It's 13. Keep grabbing two strands there. 13. It is so highly important that you take your time with this chain. Okay. And continuing to work across, you only want a total of 18 of these things. And right to the end one. And then once you have that done, what you're just gonna do is just join it to the beginning single crochet that you started with. So now it get, it's gonna get really easy now at this point to all the way to the top of the cuff. So just slip stitch it to the beginning like so. Okay, so you can see that this is what it looks like. You can see that the hole's been left for the cuff or sorry for the heel and then this area is the top where you're gonna slip your foot into. So this is uh, pretty much as easy as it's gonna get and what I want you to do is that we're going to then continue to make this area all the way to the top of the cuff and let's just review that in just a moment. So as per the pattern you want to just continue just to chain up one and one single crochet going in each all the way around. You're gonna continue to do that as we go all the way to the top of the cuff or sorry to the bottom of the top of the cuff. Um, and what we want to do for the size that we're working on the toddler um, it is gonna be a total of three inches and then the next child size is four inches. The first uh, ladies and second ladies and men's will all be a total of five inches. So right where you're going to measure is right where the back of the heel is and making sure that you have a, that inches all the way to the bottom of the cuff. They're all pretty much close to the same height. So we'll continue to do that and when I come back I will have that done and then we'll start the cuff together and uh, we'll just quickly then review and then move on to the heel as a conclusion for today's tutorial. So move on and continue to go all the way around for the dimensions of the, of the top of the area that you're working with now. So now I'm back. I may have spent I think about 25-30 minutes just to do this little space. So this is three inches then for the toddler size. If you're doing the other sizes remember that it'll be either four, five, five or five. It depends on what size that you're working on. So now we're ready for the cuff and when we look at the other example here. So the cuff is just being added. You see it has ridges to it. It's actually really not hard to maintain. We're just gonna start off and uh, form, get the cuff ready to do and then we're gonna do it. So let's begin and move on to the next part of this chapter of doing the cuff which is number five. So we're back now on the chalkboard and it's time for the cuff area that is underneath the jeans that you cannot see. It's a ribbed look and it's not very big and it's really quite easy to do but it's gonna take a few rounds in order for us to get that established and then we're off to the races from that point. So let's do the cuff next. So welcome back. We're gonna do the cuff and this is what it looks like here and you can see it's a rib looked and because it's a rib it will have stretchability to it leads into the tube area and then goes down down. So right now where we are is that we've got our three inches done for this particular size. You will have different sizes if you're working on a different uh, um, um, size of sock and it could be up to four or five inches in this length. So let's begin and we're gonna start doing the cuff. We didn't fasten off. We're just gonna keep on going and let's uh, form the cuff next. So let's begin round number one. In round number one all sizes will have us decreasing a few times before we start on with the cuff itself. So it provides it to be a little more stronger at the top so that it doesn't want to slip down on you. So we're going to chain up one and we're going to single crochet into the first one and if you look at the instructions it says you need to single crochet into the next six after this. So let's do that. So one and the other sizes are there for the different dimensions for that. So that was two and we got three four, five and six. So essentially what you have here is seven. Okay, so you'd single crochet in the first one and then it says single crochet into the next six. So that gives you a total of seven. Now if you're doing the other sizes you will notice that there's different uh, uh, denominations there. So it would have been seven, eight, nine or ten. So, so now we're gonna do the decrease. So we're just gonna go into the next stitch, pull through 
and then go into the next stitch, pull through. So you got two stitches in a row and then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops and those two just became one to make it smaller. So for, so for the toddler size it's seven in a row. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then the next two are together. Again that decreasing uh, distance is depending on the size that you're working on. So continue to do that all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then the next two are together. You keep doing that all the way around. So one, two, so you'll notice you get all the way around and you just do your two together and wait a minute you got some stitches left over. You got four left over and if you look at the instructions you will have a difference of stitches that are left over at the end and it will say four, four, ten, ten, or eleven and then all you just have to do because you got four left over you just gotta do one single crochet into each. So when you do the two together all the way around it doesn't equal like a regular hat where the last two stitches would be together. So just gotta watch out for that. Okay, so that's how you go and now we've just decreased a little bit and it will make it a little bit tighter and now we're ready for the cuff area and let's get that started and it gets easier from this point. So to start the cuff we're gonna chain up one and then single crochet into the same one below, chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next one, chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next. Please do that all the way around. So you're skipping every other one with a chain one between them. So when you get all the way back around remember it's chain one and then go into the last one and before you join it you gotta chain one first and then join to the beginning single crochet. Okay so you have a chain one spaces in between uh, and basically we're gonna get it started. So we're not going ready for the cuff ribbing look yet. We have to establish then half double crochets and, and double crochets in the next one. Let's do that. So let's start this round and we're gonna chain up two and then in the same stitch you want a half double crochet. So here's the trick with this one. In the uh, single crochets below you're always gonna put a half double crochet. In the chain one space it's gonna be a double crochet. Okay so the next one is a half double crochet because it's a stitch and then the next one is a double crochet because it's in the chain one space between the stitches. So that's the secret to this one so just uh, do that all the way around. It's really quite a no brainer. So just going into each one and just give it the right stitch that it needs. So it's half double crochets in stitches and double crochets in chain one spaces. Please do that all the way around. Okay I'm coming up all the way back around and I'm just following exactly what I need to do and there's the last half double crochet and remember there was a single or there was a chain one space before the join. So the last one is a double crochet and then just join it to the top of the first half double crochet there. Okay. So that becomes established. You don't see any ribbing yet but this is ready now and we're now ready to start the cuffing area at this point. So let's uh, just do this area and let's show you how to do the, the ribs. So the next part is gonna establish the ribbing area and we have to continue to do that next round over and over and over until we get to one and a half inches in thickness for the cuff and that's for my size that I'm working on. Also for the next child size is one, uh, one and a half and then the rest of the sizes are all two inch cuffs. So to begin this we're gonna chain up two which counts as, um, as nothing and we're gonna half double crochet into the same space as the join. And now here's the thing. The next double crochet, do you see that it's in the chain one space right underneath it? That's gonna get a front post double crochet. So wrap the hook going into the side of the post, pop it back out the other side, pull through, pull through two and two and that just now creates a ribbing. So the next one is a half double crochet so just match it with a half double crochet and then the next one is a double crochet. So put a front post double crochet. So wrap the hook going into the side pull through, pull through two and two and next one is half double crochet so match it. So just do exactly what you see below and just match everything up so that it works out to be all the way around. I'm gonna meet you at the end of this revolution and then I'm gonna expect you to get your 
full cuff done because it's just a matter of repeating this. So the next time you do this is that the cuff area of what I'm about to do the front post double crochet will just go around the same one to make sure that the ribbing actually follows all the way up to the top of the cuff. So continue to do that all the way around. Okay so I'm just continuing to go all the way around. I'm just matching exactly what I already explained to you and here's the last one of the double crochet that's in. So I'm matching that one and then I just join it to the top of the first half double crochet that I started with. So all the other revolutions are basically building on what you see already. So you're gonna chain two and half double crochet into the same one. The next one is a half uh, double crochet here. Do you see that? And you're just gonna do a front post double crochet there to maintain that rib and then the next one is just a half double crochet into that half double crochet and then the next one is a front post double crochet to match. So I want you to continue to do this. For my size it's one and a half inches for the height and for th and that's for the both of the child sizes. The ladies and the men's are both two inches for the cuff heights for those two. Please continue to do that and we'll meet you back and we'll fasten off our yarn together and then we're gonna go for the heel after that. So I've now just finished my cuff and if I'm on my second one I wanna make sure that I hold the first one up. Make sure that it is the same. Okay, so it would obviously be the same kind of coloration. I just decided to have a little bit of fun with today's tutorial. I want you to fasten off and now we're gonna grab our darning needle and now this is where you gotta be very careful. So we're just gonna pull the string through and I'm gonna feed this onto a darning needle. Now here's the thing. Your cuff has elasticity now built into it and you can ruin it by this strand right here. So what you wanna do is you wanna hide this in Okay, let me just do this. Hide it in and just don't go too far. Just go about yay there. Maybe about four stitches. Okay, just right underneath and pull it through. Going back in the other direction for twice. So that's the second time. And then going back in the other direction for a third time. It'll never fall out if it goes in and out three times. So now I can safely cut that. So you didn't wanna put that strand too far into the cuff around because once that string will never stretch itself but the other parts can. So now this is what it looks like and what's missing? Hmm, <laughs> it's obviously the bottom heel. So we're gonna move on to that part of the tutorial next and let's uh, begin to do that. So this is it. We're now back on the chalkboard and now it's for the final part and this is the heel number six and now we're gonna fill in the space. The heel will go really quickly. A lot of instructions here on the page but really when you see how it's done <laughs> you're gonna love it. It's actually quite quick. So let's uh, begin to work on the heel next. So let's begin to work on the heel and what we have for the instructions are right here. So let's start here. Remember early on in this tutorial I told you that there was a secret number of like 38 um, and all of those particular stitches you can set, see it here. So 38, 42, 52, 56, 58. So this is what is going in on this particular round. So let me pull back the the sample. So that number 38 is how many stitches should be right here going all the way around. So the first revolution is to get started. I'm going to so what I want you to do is that looking at the bottom of the sock again you can see here is the slip stitching. Okay, here's the toe and I want you to count over in this case I want you to count to the tenth. Now this is for my size. It's eleventh, thirteenth, fourteenth and thirteenth for the other sizes. So you don't count the one where the stitch marker is already in because that's already got something else from up here. Okay, so you just move up to the next one and just go ten. So here's the thing. Okay, let me just um, attach my yarn so I don't lose that spot. So I'm just gonna wrap my hook, sorry, wrap my uh, loop around the hook. I'm not gonna tie anything and just pull it through. And I'm going to use that. So because this is the tenth one and we knew that there was twenty going along in this bottom space if you remember, there should be ten stitches left here before you get to this other stitch marker which there is in my case. So you're actually right halfway in in the center of your sock when you go to do this. That really matters on this particular point. Okay, so what we want to do is that we want to start off and we want to chain one and single crochet into the same one. Leave this straggler down on top of, of the work so that you can trap it into position. Okay. Okay, now it says to single crochet into the next eight. So one, two, three, four, five, 
six and notice I got the straggler down underneath. That was six, seven and eight and then we just continue along. So you see here that you got two stitches left here before we jump over to this chain. So just jumping over. So we've got to do next 20 I believe. Was it say 20? Yes, 20. You have different ones for the other sizes. So you got one and two and now we just automatically jump down. Okay, so just look down and get the next stitch that's in a row. So 20, or sorry this is three and now I'm on the, that beginning chain remember. So this is four. Make sure you get two strings on top. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and I'm just looking to where I am. So I'm out of stitches here, 18. I look to the next one that's available here. This is 19 and 20 and then it says to do the next last nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I'm just gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we're just gonna join it with the slip stitch to the top of the beginning one. So now we're gonna start playing with our stitch markers again and so this is what it looks like then all the way around. Okay, so let's begin and let's move on to round number two and you're gonna need stitch markers for this point forward so get two of them ready for you. So get two stitch markers ready for you and let's begin. So we're gonna chain up one and it says to do one single crochet and the same one. So one and then one single crochet into the next six for this size. So one, two, three, four, five and six and now here's what's gonna happen. The next two are gonna be together. So we're just gonna insert in, pull through, pull, go into the next one, pull through. So you got two there pull through all three loops and that was one. Single crochet into the next one but wait, watch. Because you've single crocheted this one I want you to put a sti uh, stitch marker right where you've single crocheted. This is so important. Okay, so put a stitch marker there and then I want you then the next two are together. So just advancing the next two, put them together. Okay, so the stitch marker, so there's two together, two together with one single crochet in between and that's where the stitch marker is and if you're confused on where you are in this project, we're right here. So the stitch marker is then gonna be the halfway point in between to gather it together. So let's carry on along the back side and it says uh, one single crochet in the next 14. So let's count these out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, okay and twelve, thirteen and fourteen. Okay so the next two are gonna be together. So going into the next one and then the next one after that put those together. The next one is a single crochet. That's where I want you to put this stitch marker on this side. So just grab another one. Okay and then the next two are together. Okay so there is the halfway point established on that side and then it says to uh, one single crochet in each of the last seven. So you got one, two, 
three, four, five, six, and seven, and you're done. Okay, so then that was just the round, second round, and your stitch markers in. It gets easier now from this point once these stitch markers are established. So let's begin to do round number three. For round number three, we're just going to do one uh, chain one and one single crochet in the same one as the join. And round number three, we're just gonna let ourselves take our time and getting bigger for the heel. And this is just one single crochet into each all the way around. So no big deal. So here's the thing. When you pass those stitch markers, you need to transfer those stitches up so that you can capture it next time. This is the only time that you're just gonna do one single crochet all the way around without doing anything special. Okay, so the next one is the stitch marker coming in, pulling through, pull through, and move that stitch marker up to that space. So this is the only time you're just gonna one, do one single crochet around, and then the rest of it is just a rapid decrease from this point. Okay, so just carrying on, we just, uh, just get our hands back into position here. And we're just going to do one, continue to do one single crochet into each, going all the way to the next stitch marker. And we'll move that one up at the same time as well. So this is round number three. I was kind of surprised when I ran into this in the pattern. I, I expected it to be like a really quick decrease. But when you see the sock done, you realize that, you know, sometimes you just gotta take your time. Okay, so here's the next stitch marker right there. Okay, it's not this one, it's the next one. So going in, do the stitch and then pull that stitch marker up into that stitch. Okay, so then we just make our way back to then this, the starting point of this particular heel or well actually where it's joining with the slip stitch. And then we're gonna move up to round number four and then round number four is basically the establishing of, of uh, making it a lot easier as we go around as well. So four and five actually. Okay, so coming all the way back around and we join it like so. So let's carry on and let's go on to round number four. So now for the duration of the project, we don't really have to worry about too much of counting or anything. So we're just gonna chain up one and we're gonna look for the stitch markers. And we're just gonna single crochet ourselves until we get to two stitches before the stitch marker. And guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna put two together. In the stitch marker is just gonna be one single crochet and then the two after that will be two together. So here's the stitch marker. So then the first two will be, the two before will be put together. Okay, the one with the stitch marker will be just a regular single crochet and I need you to move that stitch marker up then. Once you do that, you're re really relying on these stitch markers then to be accurate at this point. And then the one right after it, the next two are going to be two together. Okay, so then you just continue to single crochet across until you get to the next stitch marker and then the two before it will be together. The stitch marker will be one single crochet and then two together after it. Okay, so looking for the stitch marker, it's right there. So we got two more stitches to go before I decrease. Okay, so here it is. Here's the two. I'm gonna put those two together. Single crochet in that one. Move up the stitch marker because you'll need to reference it again.
and then the two right after it is gonna be two together as well. And now you're just making your way back to the slip stitch. So I'm going to show you one more time and then you just gotta repeat this for three more times after I show you. And uh, basically then take a darning needle which I'll show you how to do um, to fasten it in and remove all your stitch markers and your one sock is good to go. So join it and let's move on to the next round which is gonna be a repeat round for a total of three additional times. So this, is, this round we're gonna chain up one and it's the same as what you've already just done. So just chain up one, one single crochet into each except for right before the stitch markers. You're gonna repeat this for a total of four times. Okay, so which includes this particular revolution and you're looking for that stitch marker to give you the clues and where to stop. So here's two before the stitch marker. So those two are together. The stitch marker is just gonna be one single crochet by itself. Move that stitch marker up because you'll reference it three more times because you have to repeat this total four times. Well this is the fourth one sorry. So I guess at this point you have to repeat it three times after you see me do it. The two right after the the single crochet sti uh, slip sti marker or the stitch marker is gonna be two together and then one single crochet into each. So you're running out of stitches a lot quicker now because you're eliminating four stitches out for every revolution at this point. So I'm gonna leave you then to do the rest of this on your own. Um, so it's just three more revolutions of this. So here's two right before the stitch marker. So put those two together. Stitch marker is just one single crochet. Move that stitch marker up so you can find it next time. So hopefully by the, this point in the tutorial you see the relevance of these stitch markers. They really, they can save you a lot of time even though they kind of slow you down a little bit but it's the only way to stay accurate. So the one, two right after it's gonna be two together and then you just go right back to the beginning for the stitch, or for the slip stitch. So continue to do this three more times and then meet me back here um, and then I'll show you how to sew in the bottom heel area. Okay, so I'll see you back then and um, we're almost done. So just keep on smiling and let's go. So I've now just finished this and I have a little bit of a space and I want to cut my yarn which I already have and I'm just gonna pull it off like this. So now what we want, I wanna address two things. I wanna close this off but I also wanna close off this side here. So usually what happens right here is that you end up with a little bit of a space and so that's where a darning needle comes into handy. Um, it's one of those things with crochet um, it's really almost unavoidable unless you're gonna do some really fancy footwork going up forward. So let's just turn it inside out. Okay, and so I can see the hole here and the yarn is somewhere to be found right there. So what I want to do is that I want to look here and I wanna kinda just, before I close this in, I can stick my finger and kind of just see how much of my skin is gonna come through and I can see that I'm gonna have a bit of an opening here. So what I'm gonna do, and this is just my own personal preference. You can do whatever you wanna do. <laughs> so I'm gonna crap, uh, cut two strands and I, cause I'm gonna do one on each side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close that off first. So I'm just gonna create a slip knot and this is on the inside and I wanna grab my darning needle and I wanna close that out. So just put my needle on there and I would do this with both sides if it were me, obviously. <laughs> you have two sides of it. So what I wanna do is that I wanna just slide it into some of the stitch work. Don't go all the way obviously through but I just wanna go through some stitch work to kind of pull it together. See how much space you can see within there? That's how much space it's gonna be if you're wearing it. So you're gonna pull it through but when you get to the slip knot just put it through the slip knot and that will lock it. Okay, and then I wanna go into another direction. I'm pulling this together the other way. This really bothers me about knit and crochet socks, this particular area. So what I like to do is I know it bothers me so I just like to address it. So I just go a few times in and out and I'm just making sure that it's not stuck to the other side. And once I'm satisfied with that I'm just gonna tie a quick little knot. You don't want any big 
big knots in this thing because you're gonna feel them. Okay, so just going in and out of the stitches just to lock that in. Now the starting strand that we had okay is right here and what I want to do is just glide that in and so then I can cut both of those strands without any worry and I'm gonna do this on the other side as well to close that in. So just I'm just gonna glide it through the same colors okay and I'm staying on this side of the fibers so it doesn't show on the other side. There you go. So now I can safely cut that out. I can cut that other one that we had done and I'm gonna do the same on the other side so I don't have to show you that. Now I'm gonna take the strand that is leading toward the back of the heel and I wanna fold the heel in a way that I can access it. So I'm just gonna pull it out to be flat like this and I'm gonna insert my, so I'm just inserting the yarn through the needle and all I just wanna do is just glide my uh, yarn needle through the stitches itself. So just matching them up. It's very much like joining a, a granny square. So just with a whip stitch just over top. This stitch will appear on the underside so that it won't be visible to people if you're wearing it. So go all the way across. This is the heel area so you might wanna consider just going back across one last time. You get obviously a lot of use out of these socks in this area of the foot. Once you're done, then just glide the needle through. Goes in like butter. Goes in one way. Glide the back the other direction. Glide it in the other direction. One last time. So if you go in and out three times, it should never follow it on you. Just like that. And you can cut it right down. So off camera what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure the other side. This is just starting strands that I buried as I went. So I can get rid of that out. I'm just gonna go and clean up. I'm gonna pull out all my stitch markers that I used uh, throughout the project uh, next. And then when we come back then I'll show you the final of this. And you can see that this turned out pretty good. So this is, remember this is the inside of it. So you just gotta flip it outside right. So I'll be back in just a moment. So this is it. This is the final. Look how amazing that is. Isn't that really cute? And I think it turned out really great. Uh, the seam lines look amazing. You barely see them and I think it's a great example of creativity. So you can do this in any size that you want to. Remember today we went through the toe. We increased it for the toe. We did the instep. We did uh, ankle to cuff. We did the cuff and then the heel. And so when you break it down in the steps all this is not as intimidating as it may appear. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.